Welcome to Side Notes. I'm out and about. And one thing I love about doing video interviews is I get to talk to many of my guests that have demonstrated by all their accomplishments in their life that the spirit of Superman and Wonder Woman still exists in a few, and it's those few individuals that inspire the rest of us to reach that much further in our own life. Today's guest is a prime example of that. I'd like to welcome Chris Allen. Thank you very much, Reg. Thank you. Well, Chris, uh, give me a quick highlights of some of the stuff that you've done. We're going to go into it right afterwards. Uh, you're nominated for the most knowledgeable realtor in Toronto, and there's 40,000 realtors in Toronto at this time, over 40,000. You've also been tapped in 2012 to become a part of a committee in regards to national defense policies here in Canada. And you share the exact same strategic advisor that Donald Trump shares. True. And that's uh, Mr. George Ross. Yes. And what I'd like you to do to begin with, I want you to take you right back 14 years ago. You joined okay. the military. It's uh, about 2000, 1999, around there. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about not only your basic training, but as you get to your first unit? Well, uh, traveling back, that, that, that's uh, quite a trip. It was, as I recall, October of 2000 or, or October of 1999, one of those two years, when I uh, first joined at Moss Park Armories in uh, downtown Toronto here, Queen and Jarvis, with the 25 Field Dam, or I think it's 25 Medcoy now. Anyways, so that was my, my first foray in uh, the military. Originally, when I was still in high school, because I was only 17 at the time, I was looking at the co-op program. But the closest or only unit at that time that had co-op was in Oshawa. So I decided, well, the co-op wasn't for me, but I still wanted to, to join the reserves at the time. And uh, that's how I ended up at, with a 2-5 uh, uh, field am. Well, you actually became a member of the uh, LDSH. Uh, I think it's called Lord Strathcona Horseman. Oh, yeah, Lord Strathcona's Horse Royal Canadian. And yeah. that's, uh, I know uh, when I was in the military, it used to be able to CFB Calgary. I mean, we're talking back when dinosaurs used to roam the land back in <laughs> the 80s and 90s. You're right. It was, it was in Calgary, and it, it, they did relocate uh, to Edmonton. And at first, I was attached posted uh, to the Strats in 2006, if memory serves correct. I was with uh, one service battalion at CFB Edmonton. I was attached posted to the Strats when, we, when Canada first sent over the tanks to Afghanistan. Uh, so I, just, I did my tour with the, the Strats, and then I came back and it be, I guess I didn't, didn't you know, do anything uh, too wrong or make too many mistakes because they, they had me on board uh, as a permanent posting, and that's where I finished out uh, the remaining portion of my career in the military with the Strats. You were also given the general campaign star for Afghanistan, your services over there. You talk a little bit of how you were able to, you know, receive that. Well, in essence, uh, our entire squadron, B squadron of LDSH, received the general campaign star for our time overseas on tour. So that star was awarded to those that were a part of Op Archer that uh, we were uh, involved in. Is there anything in Afghanistan that sticks out in your mind? I know in my own self, when I served over, I did the United Nations peacekeeping tour over in Iran, and there's mm -hmm. still things that. Uh, 1988, so we're talking many years ago, mm -hmm. but there's still things that stick out in my mind. Is there anything in Afghanistan that sticks out in your mind? Well, I think one of the things that sticks out in my mind that I find I'm able to, to I suppose, draw strength on is that the operations that the Strats were on, that B Squadron took, you know, was involved in, were obviously not in I ideal circumstances. And Afghanistan isn't exactly the first place on my, my bucket list to go visit again. But the experience I find has helped me a lot in my business and moving forward. Because I look at it almost with a lens of reflection. Whereas, let's say things aren't going well here in the city, I'm having a bad day, maybe business isn't going well for whatever reason. And I always, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know what, a bad day in Toronto when you get to go back home to your, to your bed and watch Netflix is far better than a bad day overseas on tour. So a lot of things that I find a, nor a person that hasn't perhaps been on a tour or had any experience in the military, they get bogged down and caught up in things that don't really phase, uh, phase me. So I find that bit of reflection has helped me significantly. You're also part of a, a group of uh, you know former military personnel that are actually becoming the business world here in Toronto, and that's actually helped you with expand your connections. Uh, 
You want to talk a little bit about that group? Absolutely. It's the Triple Victor Group, and it was uh, founded just a few years back uh, here in Toronto. So, what Triple Victor is, it's not a. Their mandate isn't where they kind of direct you after you've left the military into like the civilian world. It's not really a transition group. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It's not a transition group, but it's definitely at its core a networking group where all of the members are successful by their own rights in whatever their business is, whether it's in the financial sector, they're, they're all executives, financial sector, uh, legal profession, uh, consulting, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a fantastic point for a former military member to connect with very well-placed ex-military members who kind of understand what they've been through, understand where they're trying, where they're trying to go in their civilian career. As I always talk about, the power of relationships is probably too often underestimated. And when you can plug in to a network like Trello Victor, it can really help you establish yourself and accelerate your successful transition from the military into you know, your corporate world or your entrepreneurship world by plugging in and, and getting feedback from individuals who have gone through the exact same process. They know how it works. They can perhaps steer you away from, from stepping on uh, landmines for, for lack of a better term. Has that helped you? I know you've just been nominated for the most knowledgeable realtor here in Toronto. As I was saying at the beginning, there's four, over 40,000 realtors here in Toronto. Did that being part of that group and, and the connections and mm -hmm. the, the mentorship that you got from that group, did that help you gain the knowledge in regards to the industry that you're now part of? I, I would say so. Uh, the, the nomination is, is fantastic. I wasn't expecting it, so I'm, I'm very pleased to see that, that that's, that's kind of coming along. But Treble Victor Group did help in that from a business standpoint, it helped introduce me to persons who could help me with, with my business and I could also help them. And then also where I can ask and say, hey, when you left the military and you were trying to, you know, get, just transition, I guess, let's say you, let's say you were looking to be an employee or whatever, and you're like, you know, how did you go about translating your military skills and training into a format that a civilian with no military experience, who's the hiring manager of company X, will understand? I have found that, or observed that there's a lot of disconnect Whereas it's hard to translate what an armored crewman does and what they've been taught in the military. How does that benefit a civilian corporation? What, how can you speak to the hiring manager so that they understand how valuable your training is and how valuable the, the ability that that individual is going to have to really function under pressure? I think that's one of the, the biggest takeaways from the military. 2012, I think November 2012, you were tapped to become a member of the uh, Canadian National Defense Committee. Uh, you want to talk about how you got involved with that? And I know that uh, there was also a, a par parliamentary secretary you also became friends with. So at the time, the parliamentary secretary for defense was uh, Chris Alexander, who's now uh, the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. In 2012, I was the vice president of the scarborough gilwood Cons uh, Conservative Party of Canada, a riding association. Periodically, what the federal government does is they will travel throughout to different riding associations and they'll form various committees for various government ministries to, to tap and get feedback on almost what the grassroots thinks of various policies, improvements that could take place, that general uh, discussion. So, when they were in in uh, Toronto, uh, or the GTA, I should say, in 2012, I was able to, to uh, throw my two cents in to the uh, Defence Policy Committee and, of course, uh, meet uh, then uh, Parliamentary Secretary Chris Alexander, who, as you probably know, was, of course, um, in Afghanistan himself. So, but it was a great opportunity. So I was essentially, I suppose the short answer to your question is, was able to get involved because of my, my role at the, the grassroots uh, EDA level with the Conservative Party of Canada. So what you're suggesting is you're suggesting that people get out there, get involved, and then get the connection through the involvement in what they're doing. Absolutely, and not necessarily from a political standpoint. You don't have to get involved like in, in the politics, but getting involved in any avenue or 
activity that is of interest to you or that you have a passion for, something that means something to you, I think that's important. It's too easy to become or almost impose self-isolation. And if you don't get out and about and meet people, it's, it's very difficult to get away from that, to kind of escape um, that, that pull. Plus, when you're meeting persons and you, know, you never know who can help you and who you can help. Uh, as we were chatting before the interview, I thought of someone who might uh, be a great candidate for your interview and, and, and connection and we'll chat afterwards. But that's, that's what it is. It's just meeting person and person and person and connecting the dots. I think the networking and the focusing on the personal relationships is often underestimated, woefully underestimated. And as we go on to the next subject, I mean, now we talk about how you got involved with someone that's got his ears right next to Donald Trump. How did you meet George Ross and him become your strategic advisor now? And that is also through uh, relationships. So at the time, uh, George Ross was coaching one of my friend's uh, fathers. So we took a road trip to uh, Chicago because you know, we had some time off and we just went along with him where he was going to be meeting his business coach. Uh, his business coach met us. We all got along, so he introduced us to George Ross. After all of us talking and, and having a chat with George and whatnot, we were offered the opportunity to have George work with us um, in our, in our uh, business practice as the strategic advisor. And that's, that was definitely a tremendous catalyst for many of the things that I've done so far. And not only does that go back to the relationships standpoint, but it goes to another thing that I believe in quite adamantly is coaching. I think you can, trying to do everything yourself, I think is overrated. Uh, I, I would, I'm very thrilled if I can find someone in my business or in my day-to-day -day operations that is better at doing something than I am. It's not, you know, I, I'm not worried about the ego or being upset. Oh, you know, they're better than me, I'm upset. You're better than me, great. You take care of this, take that ball and run with it. If you can do a better job, fantastic. So from that day on, I've always had uh, one or more business coaches helping me move forward in, in various parts, whether it was from writing, you know, publishing my, my uh, book, or whether it's just from how to operate my business differently, work my branding, things like that. So the business coaching is key. And that's again, back to the relationship and that you know, ties into Turbo Victor. It all, it's all network. They, they all tie together. Well, looking at your website, I mean, you got pictures with some amazing individuals. I know that you actually, uh, you're involved with uh, JT Fox mm -hmm. and you were, it actually helped you develop something in regards to uh, real, mm -hmm. real estate. Uh, you've also, you've met uh, one of the people from Penn and Teller. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, yeah. I, I, I met both, but I only, I only have a picture of one. <laughs> so I met Penn and Teller, but I only, only uh, had a chance to kind of chat and then snap a photo of Teller there. We are, you know, I, you know, there's a note on your website and it's talking about the apprenticeship mm -hmm. and you said something in reference to Las Vegas. Uh, there was a quote that you said. Oh, so when I was in Vegas, I was on uh, a business trip and that was when I had met uh, Penn and, and Teller. Now, I th with the apprentice, I think there, there, there were two, two different things. The apprentice quote was referring to uh, George Ross in that uh, he has been Donald Trump's right-hand man for, I think, almost 30 or 40 years now. And he is currently the executive vice president of the entire Trump organization. And Donald Trump, whether you love him or hate him, you respect it because you know that he knows real estate, he knows business, and he knows what it is that he is doing. So when I was able to connect and, and and through that relationship and get that uh, work with, get to work with George as a strategic advisor for our business, that made a large uh, difference. There's some uh, pictures on your website at the same time where we were talking with people. I, I think you've done some video interviews to mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you sat down with the, uh, the wife of uh, the former premier of Ontario in regards to uh, Michael Harris. Correct, yes, yes. So I had a fantastic opportunity to sit down um, in, in uh, their home and interview uh, Laura Harris. So one of the things that always fascinates me is business and entrepreneurship. Those are of course two passions of mine. And Laura is an entrepreneur of, of, of her own in that she owns a, a, a medical practice 
where they take care and long-term care for, for seniors, nurse next door. So I wanted to sit down and speak with Laura and you know, see how it is that she does things, what were some of her challenges, how does she overcome some obstacles, and what would she have done differently? Those are some of the questions I always like to ask everybody, because I find you can always learn something from their answers. And like I had said, if I can find a shortcut on how not to do something, or how to do something, I'm very happy to, to take that lesson to heart. So uh, Laura was one of those persons I was able to interview to that, to that regard. Any, any other major celebrities that stick out in your mind that you've been able to get either pictures with or maybe done video interviews yourself? Uh, three days ago, so this hasn't, this, this is a, a sneak peek, I guess, so we'll see if this, if I launch the, the press release before this goes to air, but I, was, I had a chance uh, to meet with uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. So that was, uh, I think it was just this past Wednesday, he was in uh, Toronto. Every year we have like an, an annual uh, barbecue, and was, you know, I went last year, but I wasn't able to, to, to sit down with him or to meet with, meet with him. So this year I was able to, and of course, uh, many of the other, actually almost all of the, the, tr the GTA cabinet ministers were there as well. So it's a great opportunity, again, to network and connect and, and reestablish those, those relationships. One of the things that I found most exciting about this opportunity is that I was able to bring along some clients, some of my top clients with me. Because I see the value of that, again, that network and, and the relationship. So I, loyalty is always an important thing to me. I don't like to work with just anybody. I'm, I'm very selective with who I do business with. And almost in a way, I kind of just wanted to surprise them and say, hey, you know what, by the way, what are you doing on Wednesday? You want to come along and meet uh, the Prime Minister and some of the, the Cabinet Ministers? And like, oh yeah, yeah, great. So did that, got to introduce some people, and, and it was fantastic. So just kind of surprising some of my existing clients with these you know, little wows every now and then, little surprises. Any other celebrities that stick out in your mind? Just say, just two right off the top of your head. Sure. Um, first one that comes to mind is, uh, is uh, Pinball Clemens. Uh, fantastic uh, guy, uh, as I've, you guys probably already know, you know, from the Toronto Argos and, and whatnot. He is such a genuine, down-to-earth person. I don't think, I don't even think he, he, he knows the word ego, because he just will talk to anybody like he's you know, known you for so long. He's just such a personable person. And I was pleased to have had the opportunity to have had him at uh, the, the launch of my book, the book on Toronto real estate, so that was fantastic. He's just such a, such a, uh, a great, you know, glowing uh, person. Another person that kind of comes to mind is uh, Joffrey Lupo from the Maple Leafs. So I had a chance to, to sit down with him, and again, this ties back to the, to the whole relationship and networking. He was doing some, some work with um, uh, Wounded Warriors, and it was a fundraiser for a new jewelry store that was opening up. Uh, so we were raising funds for that event. And of course, Treble Victor was a partner in that event. So I had a chance to kind of to go there and you know, chat with him and, and meet him and of course raise, raise money for a, a cause that I believe in. And also had a chance to bring along again uh, some uh, uh, clients and colleagues to, to the same experience. Those two kind of popped in, in, in mind right now, those two professional athletes, I suppose. Your website? Uh, alanestates.ca. And looking back, not only over what you're doing right now, but just even back into the military, what is one thing, kind of piece of advice that you can give to someone that, you know, whether they're in the military right now, mm -hmm. coming out, or they just want to begin where you started right after the military in the career that they choose? That is a very good question, Reg. I think the biggest piece of advice that I could probably impart or share with someone else is to work with or find a, a coach or mentor or even just someone who has traveled that road or gone through that route who can help you along the way. It really does make a difference. Again, if, if someone can tell you what mistakes to avoid, then why wouldn't you want to avoid those mistakes? Or if they can accelerate your progress or introduce you to someone that might be able to, to move forward in the future, I think that's important. Another thing too, actually, is I think when it comes to, to networking and 
this is, I think, very important and often underestimated, is that you should approach the, the situation not in looking what you can get out of it, but in looking what you can give to other people. I think that is the absolute key that is all too often overlooked. And once I learned that, once someone taught that to me, it made a, a tremendous difference, a tremendous difference. Whereas now when I'm in that, that scenario, that situation, one of the things I always ask, and you know, when someone's out with me at, at you know, whatever event, they're always like, oh, well, let's see when he, he says it. I always, I always ask, how would I know what type of a client is good for you? Or who should I be on the lookout to introduce you to? And that it really like, oh, okay, you know, well, yeah, I'm looking for one, two, three, and four, and that it makes a big difference. Not just throwing out business cards like your gambit and your or you're playing poker in in Vegas. It really, is asking how can I help you? What are you looking for? And your uh, there's a link on your website to, to people that want to go take a look, maybe a brief bio of your book or they, if they want to order your book, is it on your website? Uh, it, it is. You can either find uh, the book on uh, my website, alanestates.ca, or even simply uh, enough, the book on torontorealestate.com. Well, and also there's, there's links to the video interviews too that you've done with all these countless celebrities. Too. Yes, they're, they're, they're all linked back uh, together to most of those interviews and, and you know, bios and stories are on alanestates.ca, which is where I have the majority of my, my blog and material and whatnot. Thank you very much, Chris, for having me. My pleasure, Reg. Thank you.